Good morning, and thank you for being here with me today. Today is the third Sunday of January. The apostle is Peter. The color is navy blue. The idea is faith, and the faculty of the body is the front brain. According to Webster's definition, faith is the act or state of wholeheartedly and steadfastly believing in the existence, power, and benevolence of a supreme being, of having confidence in his providential care, and of being loyal to his will as revealed or believed in. Belief and trust in the loyalty to God. A decision of an individual entrusting his or her life to God's transforming care in response to an experience of God's virtue by which one believes on the authority of God himself for belief. A firm or unquestioning belief in something for which there is no proof. Let the focus of your attention travel upward to the top of your head and the front of your brain and confirm with me. The Christ faculty of faith is quickened in me. The power of God's transforming faith moves in me and through me. It is demonstrated as confidence, a positive disposition, and a creative state of mind. For I am one with God, therefore I am one with faith. I have faith that my highest good comes to me right now. I am blessed, I am blessed, and I know that I am blessed. Won't you please become focused with me as we come before God our Father and we ask that he allows me to open my mouth and he bring utterance. That he lets the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in his sight. That he fills me as an empty pitcher standing before a fresh flowing fountain. That he sends down fresh manna from heaven designed with us in mind designed to stir up that gift of thios within us and keep us moving up the highway towards our highest good. And for that this morning, we are grateful. We are grateful this morning. I hope you will be joining us today for our first in-person service in three years. We'll be here at 2009 West Schiller and inside of the Pritzker School. You should come to door one and ring the bell. So now let's talk about the growth mindset of faith. Having faith, not yet achieved absolute faith though, not yet. The power of yet, that absolute oneness with God, we may not have achieved it yet, but we have to know and we have to work towards moving towards it every day. Let us not forget what the scripture says. Remember Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 6th verse says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. And then in the 11th verse, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Not yet seen, but it doesn't mean it won't be seen. Delayed is not denied. And because you run up on a snare, a hiccup or something, don't lose faith. Don't give up. God is still present and ever working on your behalf. His desire for you is only good and very good. You have to continue to be a disciple of God. You got to continue to embrace his truth and practice his truth. Only in practicing the truth will you be set free. In John, the eighth chapter and the 31st verse, it tells us, if you hold to my teachings, then you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Remember, we started this new year understanding that God was doing new things in our lives. He was doing new things in our spirit. He is going to do a new thing with you and with me. Remember in 2023, it's all about who God is in me. And therefore we are developing this 
closer relationship with our thios. We are becoming more connected, more energized. We are listening more. We are obeying more. We are stepping out on faith more. We are disciples of Jesus. We are disciples. What is a disciple? What does that mean? Well, by Webster's definition, a disciple is a pupil or follower of any teacher or school. So Jesus is our teacher. We get his word through the scripture. A true disciple is not just a student or a learner, but a follower and a doer. One who applies what he has learned. One who is thus walking in the way that Jesus would walk. We would truly ask ourselves when we find ourselves in a situation, what would Jesus do? What would he have us to do in this moment? And if you don't know, you can ask. You can call on him at any time. Why? Because you are one with him. You are connected with him. All you have to do is go within, become focused, lift your mind and say, Lord, what would you have me do in this instance? And listen, more importantly, hear and obey. In Matthew, it tells us how Jesus, he said to us, he told him, he said, come and follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Someone who is following Jesus, being changed by Jesus, is committed to the mission of Jesus. And what is his mission? Spreading the truth the truth that we are one with God, that he is in us and with us, and that he made us in his image and his likeness, and that in him we cannot fail. We have to know this. We have to believe this. We have to act on this, and we have to share this truth. Now, I'm going to tell you, everybody isn't ready for this truth. Not yet. Everyone isn't of the conscious mind to receive it yet. Remember, I keep saying yet, because yet is that operative word. Just because it hasn't happened yet, doesn't mean that it won't happen. Doesn't mean that they won't believe. Doesn't mean that you won't achieve. Listen, that is the power of a growth mindset. It's ever working, ever changing, ever striving toward the end goal. And yet is an important factor because it hasn't occurred yet. But you got to hold on to your faith and know that it will. <clears throat> and then in Matthew, the 28th chapter, the 18th through the 20th verses, he tells us more. He says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. I am with you always. First of all, let's think about this. He said, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Name means nature of. Don't forget that. Once you get washed in the nature of, wash is that cleansing. Clean out the old and present the new. Remember, he is doing a new thing in you this year. You are a new creature in life. And now you have his nature. You've always had it, but you have to develop it and act on it in the nature of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to do what? Obey. Obey everything that I have commanded. Now, I guarantee you, many of you are thinking about the Ten Commandments, but remember, he only gave you two. To love thy, to love him with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Two, if you can just obey those two, surely he will be with you always to the very end of age. And more importantly, you will have authority in heaven and on earth. Disciple making, entering into a relationship to help people trust and follow Jesus, which includes the whole process from conversion through maturation and through multiplication. Remember, have dominion, subdue and control, be fruitful and multiply. 
So this is the whole process of following him. It's the conversion first. And then as you grow older, as you grow wiser, as you grow stronger in the word, that's your maturation. And then the multiplication. How do you multiply? You share that word. You share that faith. You share that truth. What more can I say? What more shall I say? See, he is doing a new thing in us today. God bless you. Receive your newness in Christ today. You know, my prayer for you as always is that you remain Christ-centered and you continue to be blessed. Amen.